trouble. The name is Goldie. Way down Chicago way. I run the fortune tellers. I've been low-key keeping my eye on Empire of Sin since it dropped into one of the directs. And I'm glad I did. Remember, we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month to the subscriber most active. And in fact, we're all, what's the date? It's the 4th of December, so that should be happening hopefully this Sunday. It's taken a while to arrive on the Switch, but it looks to combine a few of my favourite genres, including turn-based strategy, resource management, and uh, being a, a gangster. That's not a genre, but it sounds awesome. Have Paradox and the Romeros made us an offer we can't refuse? Well, let's find out. Show. You know that no one ever really wins. I'm coming. The story allows you to take charge of one of several mob bosses in the Chicago region during the Prohibition era. Each one of them comes with their own backstory with other characters that you interact with mentioning certain traits or other situations that you've run into. The crime bosses on offer will for the most part be recognizable names, which adds a certain call to the game. I do not wish to talk about it. And there are a number of side missions and activities that you can take part in. Other exposition comes in the form of sit downs, where you can meet with another mob boss face to face and hash out a deal or otherwise insult each other to the point of starting a war. This is an insult. I'm not remotely interested in any partnership with you. You are a fucking disgrace to the city. But it's one of those titles where your decisions and interactions form much of the story taking place. As far as gameplay and controls go, well, it's a turn-based strategy game, but you can take direct control of your mob boss moving around in real time. You're given a location within a city and a number of missions to undertake. There's a large tutorial and there's tutorial aspects for pretty much every element of the game, which is a nice touch. Essentially, you'll run a number of shady businesses, things like speakeasies, casinos, and brothels, and you can upgrade the security and other aspects of these, like the ambience, which might add a band or other things, to draw in more punters. This, in turn, will bring in more clientele and more money. Using your little black book, you'll be able to recruit other underlings to serve with you, and these can also be promoted and put in charge of their own safe houses, Safe houses are your main bases, and the city is filled with them, not just your own, also your rivals. And if you attack another faction's safe house and manage to kill their mob boss, and you'll own everything they had before that. Now, it's quite feasible to attack individual buildings, and even those that are unoccupied. Once you're successful in this, you can then pay to convert it into a different structure. Unless it's already something like a speakeasy, then it'll cost you nothing at all. Obviously, undertaking such actions is going to put you in hot water with other factions, which could in turn either start a war or cause them to attack you back. Very often, though, you'll first be invited to one of the aforementioned sit-downs. These are a short discussion about your actions, where you could admit them or turn around flat deny them or essentially spit in the face of the other mob boss and cause an instant war. The city itself is split into several different regions which are accessible via a short taxi ride. And when I say a short, I mean instant. It would have perhaps been a little bit more logical for your taxi journeys to take some time as if one area of the city is attacked by a rival, it's very easy to get there almost instantaneously. Turn-based fights are quite standard, but I did like the scale of these. Sometimes, if you're in an alliance, you might be offered the chance to join with an assault on another faction. You can then mark the building yourself, and this tells the AI to wait for you to attack. One particular time, I arrived only for the police to be walking around the corner and a gang of thugs so there were four factions fighting at the same time. And this is something I love in strategy games. It really added an element of surprise and resulted in absolute carnage on screen worthy of a mafia film. Combat is straightforward in terms of the way you control your character. You move the camera around with one stick and select your players with the other. You can zoom in and out with the triggers and you'll have a number of abilities at the bottom of the screen. Player order or turn order is shown at the top. And if you get knocked down and don't get killed instantly, then you can heal up using med packs. As your players undertake more combat missions, they'll gain new traits and abilities, and these can also be taught or learnt. It takes a while for you to learn these, as does the setting up of your businesses. You can speed this along by paying a little extra in-game cash, or just leave it to play out. There are a number of different grades of weapon in the game, and as you fight in different rounds or take over other safe houses, you'll find unique and even legendary weapons. And I think it was a little bit too easy to get overpowered weapons earlier on. 
and you'll soon have a squad of troops that are almost unstoppable. Now that criticism aside, I really do enjoy the combat and the general layer of the game. I think they can certainly do more with the diplomacy aspect, which allows for the forming of agreements and pacts with other mob bosses and even once you've built your relationships high enough, the marking of targets for death. It's quite a bit like Paradox's other strategy titles in that regard, with some aspects almost looking visually similar as well. For those fans of spreadsheet simulators though, I know there are many of you out there, don't worry, it's okay. There are several pages of information for you to trawl through. There's every aspect of your financial situation in each neighborhood laid out neatly, as well as relationships with other mob bosses. And with a heavy emphasis on the alcohol trade, the current prices and percentages will all be shown. Now, there are a few different ways to victory, but I found that aggression was really the only sensible choice. Not only was it much quicker, but in many ways it was also easier. Making alliances and waiting for these to flesh out or take place, or forming careful trade agreements to try and improve the output of your alcohol and the input to your establishments, always for me seemed to take second place to marching a large group of made men through the front door of your enemy's safe house and laying waste to it. What I will say is you build a real bond with some of these characters and there's the ability to rename them, which I always like. And when you lose one of them permanently, man, it stings. To conclude then, Empire of Sin doesn't hit all the marks in terms of gameplay that it could, but there's certainly enough here for strategy fans. There's work to be done on the AI, and there are a number of bugs that I'll talk about in the next section, but fundamentally I find it a very fun experience. There's no touchscreen in handheld, which is a bit of a shame, and as you'd expect, this style of game benefits from a mouse and keyboard, so the controller at times feels a little limiting. Overall, I give gameplay 16 out of 20, and the controls 15 out of 20. Visually, the game's a bit of a mixed bag. Now, it targets native resolutions in both docked and handheld, but as it stands, the dynamic resolution scaling kicks in more often than not. They've had to reduce some textures and things like that, but it still carries that 1920s ambience, and the music is fantastic. I'm on it. People have their vices. It's an unsavory business. I thought the character designs were decent. Perhaps the animations are touch clunky, but the world itself actually looks quite pleasing. You can zoom the map out to see an overview of the entire city, which is color coordinated into the different factions. As you'd expect, the musical score is excellent. That The majority of the work on the game is actually a husband and wife duo, Brenda and John Romero, who make up Romero games, and it's clearly a labor of love for them. There's a lot of attention to small details. I think a bit more variety in terms of the buildings and the businesses that you can construct would have helped. But what's here does look good, and the map and the way it shows all of the characters is very clear. There are a few bugs as it stands, there's no two ways about it. One time I was put in charge of the enemy troops rather than their own, and the camera has a tendency to sometimes glitch through the wall. You have to spin it to get it back where you want. I know there's another patch incoming next week, and hopefully that'll do a good deal to improve these. Text size is going to be potentially an issue for some players, both in docked and handheld. I give visuals and performance 14 out of 20, and audio and sound design is excellent and gets 18 out of 20. Empire of Sin is going to set you back £35.99 or your regional equivalent. This is available physically, so it's very likely you'll be able to find it for cheaper than that quite quickly. And if you're after a game to fill the void after XCOM 2, if you've managed to finish all of that, then this certainly could do that. It also includes a few new ideas. I don't think it fleshes them out quite as well as it could have, but I've really enjoyed my time with it. £29.99 would have been the sweet spot. Overall, I give value 14 out of 20. So there we have it for our Empire of Sin review. There's a lot to like here. There is, for the hardcore XCOM strategy fans, perhaps not enough in the way of artificial intelligence, and I know for a fact that Paradox are releasing a number of patches with one due next week. Still, if you're looking for a little bit of 1920s flavour, sprinkle with the XCOM goodness and the ability to promote, strategize to a degree, negotiate with other mob bosses, and eventually become the Don, well, this might be the one for you. It scores a switch up score of 77%, and I've got to say, I've been absolutely hooked on it. Let me know down in the comments, is this one you've been considering or have looked at? And as always, a big thanks to the developer for the review copy. If you enjoy the content, consider sticking around. And as always, a big thanks to our patrons. If you want to join those, then all the links will be down in the description. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it switching. Up. Cheers guys. See ya. The name is Goldie.
way down Chicago way. I run the fortune tellers. But if you're looking for a good time, ain't no better place. I am a performer by art, but keep my business out of the spotlight. Capone and Angelo don't really know what started their feud, but I do. I poisoned Capone's supply and made Angelo take the fall. These people are merely players in my symphony. The world is my stage and I am the star. And we are about to put on a big show. You know that no one ever really wins. I'm coming for her in a gang. And if you're looking for salvation, come and get it. You know you ain't gonna find it in... Mon chéri. The Empire. Oh!